Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how you can set up your Raspberry Pi headlessly from a PC. Headless setup means that you will not need the use of a monitor, mouse, and keyboard connected directly to your Raspberry Pi. Instead, you can do it completely from your PC. What you're going to need to complete this tutorial is a Raspberry Pi. Here I have the Model 2B. You will also need a micro SD card and an adapter to allow you to plug it into your computer. You will need a micro USB power supply, and you will need an RJ45 Ethernet cable. A RJ45 Ethernet cable is your standard Ethernet cable. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your favorite internet browser and go to raspberrypi.org. Once you get here, click on Downloads, click on Raspbian, and then you're going to want to download Raspbian Jesse with Pixel, and this can be done either through a torrent client or you can download directly the zip file from their website. I recommend the torrent client as it's a little bit more reliable and it's faster. In addition to this, you're going to have to download some software that allows you to decompress the uh, zip file that you're going to get here. And they recommend that you download from uh, 7zip.org slash download.html. So here I downloaded the 64-bit version. Uh, because I'm on a 64-bit computer, and likely you are too. So uh, download the appropriate version for your computer. In addition to this, you're going to have to download an SSH client, and PuTTY is the most popular one, and here I show a link uh, for PuTTY, and this is quite a bit to write down. A quick Googling will give you this, or you can check the description for further details. You're going to want to download PuTTY.exe, so be sure to download that. And finally, you're going to need to download uh, a software package called Win32 Disk Imager, and this allows you to write the image of the operating system to an SD card. So you're going to have to download that and install that as well. I've already done all of this. It takes quite a bit of time to do these downloads, and I've already done this. And I've put all the files relevant in this folder on my desktop here called Raspbian. So I've already installed Win32 Disk Imager. I've already installed 7-Zip. I have PuTTY downloaded here, and I have the Raspbian Jesse operating system uh, compressed. So right-click on the Raspbian Jesse operating system file, go to 7-Zip, and extract here. And this will take a moment, depending on the speed of your computer, and it will extract the uh, image file as shown here. Okay, great. Now we see that the disk image is here. So the next thing you're going to want to do is insert your SD card. And here I have an untitled empty SD card. This is the micro SD card um, for the Raspberry Pi. Open up Win32 Disk Imager. And then you're going to want to find the image file. So I'm going to navigate to Raspbian. I'm going to choose the image file. And then we're going to have to choose the device to which we want to write. And here it shows that I am going to be writing to the F drive. And I know that the F drive is my untitled SD card here. So then you just hit Write. And yes, you want to continue. And this is going to take a little bit of time. All right, so we have finished writing the image to the SD card. Just hit OK. Then hit Exit. So we see that our untitled SD card is now called boot, and if we open this up, we see that there's quite a few different files in here. Next thing you're going to want to do is open up an instance of Notepad. And then in Notepad, you can write whatever you want. And then you can save this as, and you're going to want to navigate to the boot um, uh, SD card that you have here and go for all files. And you want to type in quotation mark SSH quotation mark. And this will make sure that you don't have an extension appended to the end of the file name. Hit save. And by the way, you don't actually have to call the uh, write in here whatever you want. The point is, is that you can. It doesn't matter what you do. And now we have a file here called SSH. And what this does is it enables SSH access for our Raspberry Pi image um, so that we can SSH into it. In previous versions of the Raspbian operating system, you didn't need to do this step. Uh, but because the Raspberry Pi Foundation um, found out that a lot of people were unaware that SSH was enabled by default, um, they introduced this step so that you have to deliberately enable it so that you don't accidentally expose yourself with a back door. So now that you've done this, let's eject the SD card. And now we can remove it and insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Take the card out of your computer, take the SD card out, and plug it into your Raspberry Pi. 
Then you're going to want to take your Ethernet cable and plug that into your Pi. And then finally, you're going to want to take your power cord and plug that into your Raspberry Pi as well. And you'll see that these lights come on here. And we see a red one and a green one. It doesn't show up too well in this lighting that I have here, but there's a red and a green. And you want this to boot for about a minute. And it's initializing the first time it boots. It takes a little bit of time for it to get set up, but once it's set up, uh, your boot time will be significantly shorter. To be able to SSH into our Raspberry Pi, we're going to need to know the IPv4 address of our Raspberry Pi. And to figure this out, uh, we're going to have to open up an instance of command prompt. Type in ping dash four, and dash four is an option. That means that you want the IPv4 address, raspberry pi dot local. When you reflash a Raspberry Pi, it will by default have the name Raspberry Pi, and we are looking for a local Pi on our local network. And we see that our router has given it the address 10.0.1.13. Open up PuTTY. And when you open up PuTTY, it should default to this screen here. And here you can type in the host name or IP address of the device you want to connect to. And we know that that address is 10.0.1.13 and SSH port 22. Hit open. And yes, we want to accept. And now it will ask you who you want to log in as. This is your username and the default username is Pi. It will then ask you for your password and your password is Raspberry. Now I've typed it in and you see there's nothing here and that's a security feature of this so that you don't you know, type in and somebody reads it over your shoulder. Hit enter. And there you have it. Now we have logged into our Raspberry Pi. Now because this is a new installation on our Raspberry Pi, we're going to want to configure it such that the Pi can access the entire file system. To do this, type in sudo raspi-config and then option one here is expand file system. Click enter and then click OK and it says it'll be ready, uh, it will take care of this on next reboot. And I'd like to point out that there are a few other options in here. For example, in your boot options, you can choose how you want your Raspberry Pi to boot. So for example, if you want it to automatically boot to your desktop and log in, select that now. And you can see that there are some advanced options here if you want to get into some of the more advanced features of your Raspberry Pi, but I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. Hit finish, and then it will ask you if you would like to reboot. Hit yes. This will close the connection with PuTTY because your Raspberry Pi is now rebooting, so just close the window now and open up a new instance of PuTTY. Now, when your Raspberry Pi reboots, there's nothing to say that it will have the same IP address it did last time that it was connected to your network. I mean, likely your router will at some point reassign the IP address of this device, depending on how many devices connect to your network. So you're either going to have to ping your Raspberry Pi using the command that we used earlier every time you boot up your Pi, or as a shorthand, under hostname, you could just type in Raspberry Pi dot local. Again, port 22, and then hit open. Yes, you want to accept, and it gives you again the option, you can log in as Pi, and your password is again Raspberry. So there you have it how to headlessly set up your Raspberry Pi such that you don't need a monitor, mouse, and keyboard. Now you might, this might be enough for you, you know, having the access to the terminal of the Raspberry Pi. However, you might also think that it would be nice to have access to the desktop GUI. In my next tutorial, I show you how you can access the desktop GUI, so check it out. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. For more tutorials like this, visit thezanshow.com.